This is Hello Hockey with Sean Bell and Tom Gazzola. Yes, indeed, it is Hello Hockey, Tom Gazzola, Sean Bell, YouTube Trev with you on this beautiful Saturday in lovely Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. As we get set, it is the dawn of the postseason in the National Hockey League, and uh, of course, uh, we are so pumped for it, Belzy. It's going to be so good. Uh, thank you for joining us. As always, uh, join the conversation. Text us, 780-218-9999, or if you're watching on YouTube, get in via the nasty chat. Uh, we're going to kick it off right away, Belzy. Well, let's go. Let's we're not, not even, even waste time. We're not going to mess around, because Jesse yeah. Granger is standing by. Jesse Granger from The Athletic in Vegas. He wants to talk about those Vegas Golden Knights and what happened with them. Mike And how they ducked the Oilers? I d I'm not saying it. I'm not saying it. We're going to do a playoff primer today, and we begin, as always, with the morning coffee brought to you by Fox Coffee. Check them out two blocks south of Rogers Place on 104th Street with the main location very close to opening up soon. In the meantime, they're running a pop-up shop selling coffees, donuts, 10 varieties of coffee beans that they roast themselves. I talked to Jarrell today, and the best part about when I talked to Jarrell he goes, hey, uh, do you know this uh, YouTube show uh, Above Average? Do you know that guy, Trevor? Hmm. And I was like, yeah. That's our producer for Hello Hockey and the Oil Stream Premium Post Game Show brought to you by GCL Diesel. He goes, no way. I'm like, that's he our boy. He was just floored by that? Yeah. Awesome. And you know what he said, Trev? He goes, I watch Above Average. This is Jarrell from Fox Coffee. And he was at I, I'm so, I know you're getting Jesse on the phone, but he goes, I watch Above Average on YouTube, and he's very sincere. He's very genuine. And you know what puts him apart from the other guys on YouTube that do these videos and breakdowns of the Oilers? And I was like, what? He sounds like he knows what he's talking about. And I was like, that's because he's a professional. He is a pro. He, he's, he's a pro. He's actually a professional broadcaster. He's a pro. Wow, actually, You're doing it, kid. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Trav. Well, I'm doing something right then. Let's clap for you. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, that's pretty yeah, Man, I'm just smiling. Clicks, yeah, there there thanks, go. boys. Well, that's that's really cool to hear, actually. That's, that's awesome. Trev, YouTube, Trev. Uh, you know what's amazing about that is because before you got here, myself and Trev were talking and like, hey, how, how excited would you be about, you know, the Oilers? He's like... I've had to bring my fandom down. He's like, I'm trying to be a professional. Very good. Yeah, let's go. He's a and pro. here it is. You're be. a pro. Let's buddy. go. Thanks, boys. You come from the me best. last week to the press box. First time covering a game. Poor guy can't cheer in the press box. No, he's he's separated himself. He's become yeah. a Absolutely. working member of the media, and I'm very proud of YouTube Trev of Pincher Creek, Alberta. Let's Flames go. Flames territory. Yeah. Now has separated himself from. Oiler fandom to Oilers reporter slash broadcast. Nah, I need to see you become like Oilers fandom to the next level, but on a media side. No, <laughs> oh, do gosh. not do that ever. Yeah, I won't do that. Do won't not do that. do that ever. You could be like Biz. <laughs> I don't. Uh, I don't know if no, I want to be Biz. <laughs> no, you do right not want to be. And no. make it a joke. No, absolutely not. Uh, this guy that's standing <laughs> by right now, Jesse Granger from the Athletic. In Vegas is probably going, what the hell is going on here? YouTube Trev is not a fan. He is working media. You do not cheer. You do not. And uh, I think Jesse can appreciate YouTube Trev in his first year as a member of Edmonton Sports Talk, not cheering in the press box. Uh, Jesse, uh, I know we're going to do a playoff primer. We're going to talk about those golden nights that you cover day to day. But uh, YouTube Trev is in his first year covering the Oilers. He is a phenomenal producer. He just called you. He came down to the press box in Edmonton uh, last week for his first game. I took him. I showed him the ropes. Ryan Rashog is already trying to poach him for his Got Your Back podcast. I was like, excuse me. Get your hands He's off. He's our guy for our station. Thank you very much. But if you saw someone, Jesse, cheering in the press box, how would you react? Anywhere in the league. I don't know. I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't cheer in the press box. I don't think you should, but I'm not, I, it, it wouldn't bother me if someone up there really did cheer. I mean, there's, 
there are players in the press box. So like I like sometimes you you've got the healthy scratches up there and they're cheering. Like that that'll happen sometimes, especially on the road. You end up getting like sitting closer to the players than you. Than, well, at least that I typically do at home games, and you'll hear a, a yell, and you look over, and it's like, oh, that's that's just Paul Cotter. Uh, <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> so, yeah, it, 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 I don't know. I'm not. I'm not. A, I guess I'm not as like stuck in the mud about that as maybe some other journalists are. Well, Belson used to chair the press box when he played for Colorado, Montreal, Edmonton, whoa, Minnesota, whoa, Dallas. whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I wasn't in the press box except for in Minnesota for the playoff run, the entirety of okay, it. Okay, okay, Belzy. But I would like to just see a guy, you know, like YouTube Trev, stand up and high five every media member on the way down. Oh. Just sprint down <laughs> and high five everybody and then that rip is back a to no, seat, no. Call it a day. Absolutely not. Was he going to get kicked out? Who's going to kick him out? Nobody's going to say anything. That's just, my point. Let him be a fan. He's not, he's professional. I'm surprised. I thought Jess would be like, you can't do that. That's not right. we got to be uh, following the guidelines of media, working media, and all that stuff. But, uh, Jesse, I just wanted to float that to you off the hop here. But, uh, anyway, anyway, let's let's go into it with Jesse Granger of the Athletic uh, Vegas covering the Golden Knights. And, uh, hey, uh, this was a crazy season. A lot of people saying, like, best year ever in the NHL. How would you sum it up as we get set for the playoffs here, Jesse? Well, I mean, obviously what happens over the next couple months to me determines if it's the best season, but it was a, a heck of a playoff chase, especially in the East. Um, we, I feel like it's been forever since we've had playoff races come down to, to the final buzzer like that. Um, even in the West, obviously the eight teams were set, but Thursday night between Vegas and LA and all the late game drama and oh the Golden Knights blowing it to the Ducks and then and then the Kings looking like, for a second, I thought the Kings were throwing that game to avoid the Oilers. But then Arvis had scores in the final minute. That was, this was a very fun season. And I think the, the, the way the playoff chases wrapped up was fun. And to me, uh, we were doing this exercise a couple weeks ago, trying to go through the teams. And like, how many teams do you believe can legitimately win the Stanley Cup? And this has got to be the most teams I've ever thought could win it all. Um, going into the playoffs. So we'll see how it all plays out. Uh, it, it obviously never goes the way we expect, but it, it really does feel like this is the most up in the air the Cup has been in a long time. That's a me. great great way to describe it, Jesse. Uh, okay, let's let's look at this from a Vegas Golden Knights perspective because I'm on the air doing the post-game show after the Oilers get absolutely stomped by the Colorado Avalanche. They dress, uh, you know, they, they dress basically a bunch of AHL guys and uh, keep out the big boys, and, and they get crushed. And I'm like, well, Vegas is going to beat Anaheim. And I look up, and it's 3-1, and then uh, Anaheim hits that empty netter, and I go, wow, okay. And then I look at the score in L.A. with the Blackhawks game, and they're up 3-1, to one, and then it's 3-2. And I'm like, all right, just uh, keeping tabs on the out-of-town scores. Uh, it's 3-2 now. Oh, it's 3-3 now. And then literally like two minutes later, Jesse, I'm like, Four three and uh, four three uh, Chicago Blackhawks, and then with a minute left, I go just so you know, and I had to interrupt Trev as he was doing the the big save of the game and the player of the game. It is four four, and then six seconds at OT. I'm saying, all right, Edmonton's facing the LA Kings for a third consecutive postseason. From a Vegas point of view, uh, how are you looking at this matchup with the Dallas Stars, and and where are the Golden Knights right now? Yeah, I think. Stylistically, if you look at these team systems, I think it's a very good matchup for the Golden Knights. However, personnel-wise, obviously the stars are stacked. I mean, their forward group is so deep. I saw Evgeny Dodonov. There's a chance he could play on the fourth line. If you're even considering putting Evgeny Dodonov on the fourth line, you have too many good forwards. Like, that's ridiculous. This team is very, very, very deep. They kind of remind me of the Golden Knights last year, honestly. Mm. Um, a team that maybe doesn't have the best line in the league, but they have four really good lines that they're not worried about matchups. They can throw them all out there. That's kind of what I see in the stars. Um, for Vegas, where are they? It's, that is a question we've been asking, I feel like, all season for this team. They've had stretches where they look really good, and they look like the team that rolled through the playoffs last year, and you're starting to think, oh, here they are. They're starting to, to get back on track, and then they'll lose a couple games in a row to bad teams, and you just have – that. It, this team has been very inconsistent this year. I think the injuries have played a part in that, and they are getting healthier, so you'd think that would help, but I think this – Golden Knights team is probably the biggest wild card in the playoffs in terms of, I think their range of outcomes 
is massive. I wouldn't be surprised if, if the, the Stars are the more talented team. I wouldn't be surprised if Vegas loses to the Stars. I also wouldn't be surprised if they get guys back. They look way better than they have all year now that they're healthy and they go on a long run. So I think there are a lot of different outcomes for this team because they've been so inconsistent. Yeah, Jesse, you kind of alluded to it already, but you know how close is Vegas to truly being healthy? And, and the reason I ask that is because when you look at that team on paper, and once again, you've alluded to it, there is some serious potential with this hockey team where it's not out of the realm of possibilities for them to go all the way to, to the Stanley Cup. And it, and it really just depends on health because in that central division, there's some teams that are absolutely loaded. So are, are we close to seeing a Vegas team healthy or are we still maybe you know a week away, two weeks away, um, kind of limp through that first round? Yeah, I, I think they are getting close to healthy. Um, Bruce Cassidy said the other day that he thinks they're as healthy as they've been all year. They're obviously still without a couple guys. Um, the two big ones being Alex Petrangelo, who has missed, I think, 11 of the last 13 games with an illness. Um, and then Mark Stone, obviously, who has been out since months ago um, with the spleen laceration. Stone has been on the ice with them in the non-contact jersey. Because it's an internal injury like that and it's not, a typical hockey injury, it's really tough to say when he's going to play. Um, they're obviously not talking. They're not super open to talk about it. Kelly McCrimmon <laughs> is hosting. He, Kelly McCrimmon is holding a press conference this morning before practice here in about an hour. So we're obviously going to ask her about Stone. We may get a lot of clarity then. Um, we'll have to see. But yes, I do think he's close. He wouldn't be out there on the ice if he wasn't close. So I do think that Stone could be back in this first round, if not game one. And to me, that makes all the difference. It was why Vegas won it all last year. And if you remember going into the playoffs, nobody was picking the Golden Knights last year because they didn't look like a contender. Their metrics were all kind of mediocre. Um, and then Stone came back, and all of a sudden, when, when he is at his best, and that's the thing, he can't just be back. He has to be back and playing like himself. But right. when that happens, this is one of the best teams in hockey. When they don't have Mark Stone, they aren't. It's very simple. He, to me, he is the stir that, he is the straw that stirs the drink. He is the engine for this team. Mark Stone is everything for this Golden Knights team, as talented as they are. So that is the big question mark. And I guess we'll know uh, American Airlines Center on Sunday, or on Monday if he comes out for warm-ups. All of a sudden, this team looks a lot more dangerous. Yeah, it does. Uh, Jesse Granger joining us, The Athletic in Vegas, covering the Golden Knights as we get a pre- playoff primer going here on Hello Hockey. Text us 780-218-9999 and then via the Nasty Chat if you're watching on YouTube. All right, Jesse, I want to bounce this off of you because when the Golden Knights were here a couple weeks ago, I was talking with Gary Lawless and he brought up the fact that this Golden Knights team has played a ton of hockey. Them and the Tampa Bay Lightning the last couple of years uh, have played the most. And he goes, I think they're starting to, to show that they've played the most hockey, and it's wearing on them. Uh, in your opinion, how are the Golden Knights handling the amount of hockey they've played in the last couple of years, and do you think it is going to become a detriment to them this postseason? Yeah, it's, it's a really good question, especially because they're an older team, obviously. they they the, the way they built this team by trading prospects and picks to acquire players in their prime, you end up with a bunch of guys who are early 30s, late 20s. They're not the youngest team out there. They have played a lot of hockey, and I think that that's part of the reason they've been so banged up the last couple seasons. Mm-hmm. Um, this isn't a... a, a one season thing they've you you look at last year they were very injured until the playoffs and then they were suddenly healthy throughout and the year before that the year they missed the playoffs was i've never seen anything like the injuries that team suffered so this is a team that has been banged up for a while and i think it's i think the the compiling games do play a factor in that um will it hurt them this playoff run i don't know um, they they do have some younger pieces that that have kind of jumped into the lineup. Pavel Dorofiev, Paul Cotter, um, Logan Thompson in net. He's never played in the playoffs, so he'll be making his playoff debut. So that's obviously going to be something interesting to watch. I don't think he's worn down. Obviously, so they do have some some younger reinforcements in there. I'm not sure if the fatigue will play a factor, but I do think it's a big reason why they've been so banged up these last three years is because. They go on a long run every year. They never really have a long off season, except for the one year they they missed it. So, yeah, I think it has played a factor. Yeah, that definitely can. It's uh, 
you know, you just you're basically adding 28 games more or less every single year when everybody else is kind of sitting on the golf course. So that uh, definitely can play a factor. But when you're looking to this series, what is like what does Vegas have to do to beat the Stars? Because if you try to line up with a, just a flat out track meet, there's a high likelihood you're not going past the first round. So what does Vegas need to do to to overcome a team like the Stars? Yeah, so I mentioned earlier that to me, the systems these teams run favors the Golden Knights. And I've watched a lot of Pete DeBoer's system. Um, obviously, the yes. Golden Knights played him a lot when he was yes. the Sharks coach. Then I, then, I, then I covered him as the coach in Vegas for three years, and now they've played him twice in a row in the playoffs. So I've seen so many examples of Pete's system and how it, go, how it matches up to different teams. And the type of teams that Pete's teams have struggled against are the teams that pack it in defensively, that play a tight zone shell around the front. The, the series that I really that sticks out to me is in the bubble playoffs um, in 2020, they played Vancouver, and it was not a very good Vancouver team. Mm-hmm. Um, and it went to seven games because the Golden Knights could not score on Thatcher Demko. And a big reason was I thought Travis Green had a brilliant defensive strategy. He's like, look, we're, uh, we're outmanned here. We're just going to keep everything out of the slot, and we're going to force them to shoot it from the outside. And Pete DeBoer's system likes to shoot from the outside, so that's what Vegas did for seven games, and they never scored on Demko. They ended up barely winning it at the end, but they were out shooting them 50-10 to 10 every night and couldn't score. Well, then last year we saw Pete's stars do the same thing against the Golden Knights. Bruce Cassidy plays a similar defensive zone that – just kind of sits back. You don't chase the puck. They'll let you hold it in the offensive zone as long as you want, as long as you keep it to the outside. And I thought the Stars had a really hard time scoring on the Golden Knights last year. So I do think the Stars are the more talented team. They've got plenty of scorers. They've got good defense. Jake Ottinger has been looking a lot better lately. I think they're a very good team that probably should win this series. But I do think that the the defensive system the Golden Knights play is going to give them problems. All right. This is going to be a lot of fun to watch this series. You get a front row seat, and uh, we're blessed with four fantastic matchups in the Western Conference. Jesse, thanks for hopping on today. Safe travels, brother, because I know you're going to be bouncing back and forth between uh, Vegas and Dallas, and maybe we see you down the road because it's always a pleasure having you. Uh, Be good, and uh, we'll talk soon, all right? Best time of the year. Thanks for having me, guys. That is Jesse Granger, the Athletic Vegas. uh, Fantastic writer, uh, just a great reporter. Check him out on X. And uh, if you do have a subscription to The Athletic, he is uh, uh, excellent, I would say. And uh, a good dude, just as good as he is as a writer. Uh, He's a phenomenal person, too, which is the best part. So we thank Jesse Granger for hopping on today. On Hello Hockey, a little playoff primer. I like that. You're like, hey, we're playoff primer today, right? I'm like, hell yeah. Yeah, let's get let's Jesse get it. on here. You didn't ask him about why the Vegas uh, Golden Knights were ducking the others, though. <sighs> Are they? Or did they just mess I up? Know. I don't think Would it, I don't You think played in the, in the National Hockey League. You played well, pro easy hockey. The answer is, yeah, it never happens. Right. But, I mean, crazier things have happened. Why was L.A. messing around the way L.A. messed around? Because L.A. Have just theory? doesn't have the high-end skill that these other teams do. I believe that. So I'm, I'm with just you kidding. On just that. look at it for face value. Sure. Okay. The only team really, well, the only two teams really, were Vancouver and Edmonton that had nothing to lose. They, didn't, they couldn't change their standing position at all. Vegas, L.A., they both do. Okay. Sure. Interesting. Sure. Okay. You win, you play the OL. Yeah. You lose, you go to the Central. Vegas, for whatever odd reason, decides to rest half their team. Hmm. They are banged up. And and yeah, you heard Jesse talk about Petrangelo. Bang. He's got this virus. Yeah, but he's he wasn't playing. He, he hasn't played regardless, so he's still out. But yeah. Why, why are you dressing the rest of your team? You've been banged out and banged up. And guys are now starting to come back, so why would you sit them again? To make sure they're ready. You're bubble wrapping them. You're bubble wrapping them. And you know know damn well that Stone's coming back for a Of course he is. He's doing the Vince McMahon out of the Titan Tron. You know that's happening. 100%. He's a hell of a hockey player. He's Yeah, he's very good. Man. That's, That's a series that when you look at it, you say... 
if Vegas wins, it's not an upset. No, if the stars win. Not. It's not an upset. This is like just one of those 50 50s. And Dallas is outstanding. Like, yeah. to me, Belzy, Dallas, if they lose, it's because for whatever reason, they don't decide to show up. Like, when I look at the stars, and if I'm wrong from what you've seen from them, please, by all means, let me know. When they lose games, it's not that they don't have the goaltending, they, they don't have the defense, they don't have the depth at forward, they don't have the high-end skill. They have all of those things. It's just for whatever reason, sometimes they don't bring it. Yeah, that's fair. I would say that v- Vegas needs to out-physical them. You're going to sl- you're gonna have to slow down this Dallas team. Big boy Because all these guys, just they zip around the ice and they, they make it hard for you because you have to chase these guys. Mm-hmm. So for Vegas, it's get on the four-check, be heavy, Kind of what they do. Same formula that they had last year. Be big, be physical. Right? I guess the reason that it's not an upset is because if Vegas is healthy, where are they actually in the standings? If they're fully healthy. Oh, they're 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 one of the top teams in the yeah, West. So yeah, that's why it's not an upset. They're there with Edmonton and, yeah. and Vancouver, I would think. Um I was going to ask you, like, when you look at the Dallas Stars, are we building them up too much? And by we, I mean fan base, media, <coughs> outsiders. Are we looking at them and are we hyping them up too much? Uh, I don't think so. I think they're really good. Okay. Um, they're deep. They're four lines deep. They don't have any holes. Okay. Okay. If you can, I, I'm if with you, you on roll, that. If you can roll your fourth line out against uh, a second line, well, then that's that's tough to do. That's tough to beat. Right. So you you have to almost play mistake-free hockey. Mm-hmm. So I don't think we're actually building Dallas up. I just think they're a really, really well-built hockey team that will give you fits. But for them, Vegas is a good foil because of the, the heaviness of Vegas. There's experience on Vegas. Yeah. And if it it's, reminds me, remember last year when Florida to start the season was a was a top three favorite yes. in the NHL, absolutely, and they were decimated by injury. Yep. And then they played Boston. And everyone's like Boston's going to run over them because they had a dream season, historic season, historic Best season. regular season ever. Well, Florida was ranked in the top three in the preseason polls because they were deep. Right. If you look at Vegas, their lineup with a fully healthy roster, it's hard to argue that they're not going to be a top five team in the NHL. It's hard to argue. Agreed, agreed. So this is why I'm sitting here saying, it's like, well, it's not out of the realm of possibility. Like, this could be another one of those. But I'm not not shocked. I'm just needling to see if there's... Where I, pressure points where I can poke a hole. and 100%. I don't think there is. but I don't think there is either. Yeah. But you get Stone back. You've got Eichel. Can Petrangelo come back from his sickness and be effective? Hurdle looks like he's playing. Hurdle. Right like all these guys that are now starting to come back, and I'm sitting there saying like, man, that's a deep roster. They're big. They can skate. They got skill. Hmm. It just It's too... It looks too familiar to me for the the Florida Boston series. We're gonna get into the Eastern Conference yep. shortly. It is Hello Hockey, Tom Gazzola, Sean Bell, YouTube Trev with you here on Edmonton Sports Talk and of course Sportsnet Radio. Hope you're doing well on this Saturday as we get set for the Stanley Cup playoffs. Oh, that sounds so good. It's amazing. The juices are Best flowing. It's year. so good. So good. 780-218-9999. And then, uh, of course, if you're watching on our EST YouTube channel, subscribe if you haven't. Please and thank you. And if you don't mind, hit that thumbs up button. We appreciate it so much. Tube Socks says, morning, lads. Morning, Tube Socks. Uh, Tube Socks submitted a phenomenal label for our new EST Birdie Juice, which uh, you and I and Trev are going to sample later on oh, after we... Wait. After we complete this show, that's exciting. Strathcona Spirits, a great local distillery here. A good buddy, Brian Schmidt. You know Schmitty? Yes, I do. And uh, he was in here yesterday. We had him on the oil stream. Uh, very exciting. So many great things happening with our station, and we can't do it without our our audience, our listeners, and our viewers. So a huge, 
huge thank you. Uh, when our old shut, uh, station got shut down, we scrambled, Belzy, you remember, and oh, yeah. uh, now it feels like we're, we're just catching some real momentum, and it's neat to be able to do stuff like this. So we have a lot in store, and uh, we have a lot for our uh, viewers and listeners for sure. All right, really quickly, Joelle says, what does your hat say, TG? And she puts it all in caps. And uh, Joelle, I'm glad you asked because uh, portions of this hour brought to you by Modern Measure. Edmonton's leading provider of made-to-measure clothing from weddings to graduations, game day to the office, get custom fit be, because uh, custom fit's the best, first of all, like a glove, uh, business, and casual wear for a one-of-a-kind look made just for you. Belzy and I had the good fortune of hanging out with uh, Jared and Richie. You got these jeans custom made with yeah, your 32-inch thighs and your 19-inch yeah. calves. Can't wait. And Belzy, what struck me about that was like, like I just want to get jeans, and you said that in such a sincere way, and I'm like, "What are you talking about? Like, just get jeans?" And you're like, "I can't get jeans," and the boys are making you a custom pair of jeans. Yeah, I'm looking you forward to it. You got a suit coming. You got a shirt and a jacket coming yep. your way. No shirt, no shirt. Oh, I got just, the shirt. You got the shirt. Okay, you didn't get a shirt. No, okay, just a jacket. And uh, you ran into Richie this I week. I did. Yep. yep, I saw him at uh, the summit at our rink, and he basically said a week and a half. So sometime next week. I'll be down at the rink in that new suit faux show. I can't wait. All right. For those of you listening and watching, uh, we do have our final keyword to get into the trip for two to Las Vegas. Uh, Of course, uh, we've been asking you to keep it locked on Edmonton Sports Talk uh, for the latest keyword and your chance to win a trip to Vegas. Two nonstop flights. Three nights accommodation, tickets to Cirque du Soleil, presented by Fly, Y-E-G, and the L-V-C-V-A, nonstop flights over 50 destinations. Your sports trip starts with a nonstop flight from Fly, Y-E-G. Visit www.flyyeg.com. The key word today, do you want to take it? I'll take it. Or do you want to take it? That's all you, buddy. Trev, you in? You do it, buddy. The key word today is, and Trev's going to put it on your screen. It is McPhee. Boom. Oh, wait. It's not going on the screen. Fix it. One sec. There it goes. McPhee. Like George McPhee. 780-218-9999. This is the last opportunity to enter into this draw. There it is. McPhee. M-C-P-H-E-E. Text that right now, and for the next few minutes, uh, you can text as many times as you like. McPhee, 780-218-9999. That will be the final entry into the trip for two to Las Vegas, courtesy the good folks at Fly YEG and the LVCVA. And uh, you get those two tickets to a Cirque du Soleil show in Belzey. (laughs) If you were to take in a Cirque du Soleil show, nope, like we're not you doing did. that today. The what, band aid has been you, ripped what off. What do you it's not do healed. if you go to Cirque du Soleil? What do we it's not do? It's been healed. What do we not we do? We don't get absolutely crushed. It's not a hockey game. It's art. It's performance. Watch that lady fly. Boom. Text in McPhee to seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine. 99 uh, those texts are flying in right now this is the last opportunity to get into the trip for two three nights accommodations non-stop flights uh there and back from fly yeg it's been a great promo a big thank you to aaron and margo and all the the ladies over at uh the Edmonton international airport look at us look at us we're doing it yeah Awesome. Starting to turn. Starting to turn. So get those in. Uh, we'll keep it open for a few minutes. We will call our last qualifier at what point, Trev? Uh, 1130. 1130 uh, Mountain Time. So that's when we will let you know. McPhee. M-C-P-H-E-E, McPhee. All right. Uh, let's keep those texts coming in. 780-218-9999. Uh, Joelle yelling at everybody in the nasty <laughs> chat, as one does. Yeah. Cass isn't here to yell back, all caps. Joelle's just keeping it entertaining right now. She's making sure people are on the ball. She does. She's very good at that. Um, Jen says, good luck all. Uh, Joelle says, good luck, Jen. 
Rip City Steps. Watch that lady flies. He's laughing about that. Uh, uh, Tune says the driving cat says, quote, this isn't art. This is sex. Mo Wanchik from Slapshot. Slapshot. What a movie. Great movie. What a movie. Great movie. Uh, fantastic. Uh, Jason's like, can you tell the story about the 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 real situation over at your last station? I think we've told it. We had the rug pulled out from under us. That's that's basically the. Sh- the- you ever seen old school? Of course. So when they kind of got the rug pulled out from underneath them, yeah, and they're all sitting in uh, what was it the uh, the Denny's or whatever? Yes, that was like you guys. That was us. That was you guys. And you, well, because you you and I started this show on yep. our old station. We had and we what, got a, ten ten episodes ten in. Episodes got pulled. We we're all just sitting back. You were one of the first phone calls that I actually Hanging took out at the old Denny's. Everybody somber, losing their minds. <laughs> that was us. <laughs> Uh, and now look at us. That was us, Jason. That's what happened. And we're like, well, we got to start something new. And here we are at EST. Yeah. So you guys were on the air. Yeah. Myself and, then, and uh, Lieutenant Eric. And at nine o'clock. Right at nine o'clock. The plugs got pulled, right? We were asked to go in for a meeting in the boardroom. And we we're like, that's weird. Because the head of that media company in this market, who never really... Gave us much attention because she had to worry about CTV yep. and this and that. The other two's the rock station, the pop station, top forty, sports station was just, we were just like we were just like the we were the cousin that everyone's like, hey, yeah, that was us. Yeah, we had our own thing. It was great. And so then the then the actual station feed turned into music, did it not? They literally hit a switch, looped that sound. Yeah. And we were being told that our station no longer existed. And yeah. it came not from here, from Toronto. Yep. And we're like, all right, it's over. Tough bounce. It's over. And then we got together, Dusty, myself, Eric, and Matthew Iwanek, and we said, what are we going to do? But out of the ashes, a rose of Phoenix. Here we are. And you, and YouTube Trev, and now Zach, that we hired Zach to come this week. Yeah. So that's the story, Jason. That is the story. Let's go. Yeah. We love it. We love it. 780-218-9999. The keyword last entry into the trip for two to Las Vegas. The keyword is McPhee. Text that to 780-218-9999. All right. This is Hello Hockey. Tom Gazzola, Sean Bell. YouTube Trev with you as we roll along. A big thank you to Jesse Granger for stopping by. Great stuff from him as always. The playoffs begin, Belzy. They begin. We've got hockey today, 5 p.m. our time. You got the Hurricanes and the Islanders in probably the series nobody gives to the you know Snor-Bowl. what's about. Yes, and then we're gonna watch Boston face off against Toronto at TD Got it. Uh, give us a little bit of insight into these two matchups that we're going to watch today in the National Hockey League as the playoffs begin. Okay, Carolina, New York. I feel like Carolina is going to win this. They've got good talent. Yes. Adding Gensel was a massive piece of the puzzle for them. I think yes. now they can score. They got that man on man system in the D zone. Why is that important? Because we've talked about this. We talked about it earlier in the season with the Oilers because they couldn't figure it out. Why is the man-on-man important? It's not. I hate it. It sucks. It sucks. Go on. Well, put it this way. You have to have, you have, to have certain personnel that can be able to play a man-on-man system, like a true man-on-man system. You can't have slugs. Define slugs. Slow people. Okay. Guy that have cement boots. Gotcha. Can't move. Gotcha. Piano's tied to them. Not good. So, so man, oh man. let me give you an example of this. Please. Okay, so we had a Nate McEwen all-star team. I remember this. Right? So when they when they got rid of the, the Golden Bears versus the other rookies, they had McEwen Nate all-stars versus the other prospects. And 
The first year we beat them, we beat them like 2-1 or 3-1 or whatever the score was. Mm -hmm. The next year, all of a sudden they loaded their team up. They're like, we'll never lose to these guys again. Rightfully so, you shouldn't. Right. Our coaches, they're like, we should do man on man because it's the easiest to teach. It's very simple. I've got you and I'm going to follow you around the ice. Guys, we got guys that don't work out. We got guys that are probably drunk right now. They got pros. Do you think man on man's a good idea? Yeah. It's the easiest to teach. Okay. Well, they beat us 9-1. They had 72 shots. We had 10. Close one. Close one. So my point is, is that if you're going to play man on man, you got to have the personnel to do it. You got to have guys that can move around the ice. They got speed. There's good communication. That's how it works. Mm Mm-hmm. Outside of that, most of the teams in the NHL play a kind of a man-zone combination where down low, it's a, it's a zone defense. You're trying to create layers like we've talked about. And up top, it might be a little bit more of a man-on-man. But for whatever odd reason, Carolina executes that man-on-man very well. Very well. You look at the Islanders, well... We, we were on this show and we had Johnny Boychuk and yes. we chirped him about... Uh, you did. You know, well, you're right. I did. I'm, not, chir- I'm a- not chirping Johnny Boychuk. I like Johnny Boychuk. I love Johnny. I have no ground to stand on to chirp Johnny. We went to high school together. He's two years older. He's, a, he's a great human being. Yes, he is. But okay, continue. The Sorry. the director of whatever. Anyway. He's player development. Um, <laughs> I was going to say something else, but... Um, the Islanders with Patty Waugh, they have that, they're like that staple. Like they're used to, they're, they're like the old Minnesota Wild. You when, play, were you I under played, Jacques I Lemaire? Was, I was under was Jacques, Jacques Lemaire, Lemaire and there? it was very structured. It was, you're slowing guys down through the neutral zone. You're clogging up the middle of the ice. They do that, but Patty Waugh has got a bit of an up-tempo system. Yeah. He applies a little bit more pressure. There's something about Patty Waugh led teams that I just don't like betting on. Mm. So you're saying the Islanders have... I know. I'm not saying that. This is I'm Carolina in a 4-5 or five situation? I think, I think it's going to be more than a 4-5. or five. I think this could go 6. Patty Wall is the X factor. Patty Wall is the X factor. He just Did you see when he came in and that intensity that he brought in the first couple of practices? Like it was just completely different. He has this weird scowl and this weird way about him that I think I would be intimidated by he's, Patrick He's Wall. ultra detail oriented. Okay. If you watch any of his teams in junior, how they play, lines one through four are the exact same. And they bring it offensively. Quebec Rampart. Yes. They bring it offensively. Okay. But at the same time, like, man, can they lock it down? And that's what he's Islanders, trying to do with the Islanders. Not, that's not a sexy lineup. Nope. But since he's been there, what does it look like? They look like a different team. Win by committee. 100%. So... I just, I have a hard time trying to bet against the Islanders, Mm -hmm. but I think Carolina might be too much. They have a lot. They do have a lot. And that Gensel piece just put them over the top. Kuznetsov? Yeah. Yeah. Eh. I I don't mind Kuznetsov. I just think he adds, you know, depth piece. He's got good skill, good playmaker. Mm -hmm. Just just another piece to the puzzle, right? Like it's uh, it's a really good lineup. Another layer. Yeah. All right, that is the first game of the playoffs uh, this Saturday as we kick off the Stanley Cup playoffs. Uh, text us your thoughts. What do you think of going into the first two games of the postseason? Carolina gets New York, the Islanders, at 5 o'clock Mountain Time, and then at 8 p.m. it is Boston and Toronto. Pardon me, that's Eastern, uh, so 3 o'clock and then 6 o'clock Mountain Time. Uh, is it as simple as saying that the the Leafs don't have the Bruins number and the Bruins are going to roll here? Because I don't feel that's true. And, Belsey, I'm going to say this to you. I don't think Boston is legitimately a top-tier team this year. Here's why. I'm going to show my work. You go to overtime slash a shootout in over a quarter of your games. You lose 15 of those in a quarter of your games, you have 15 OTLs. To me, that's a sign, not of weakness, but that's something that can be exposed. 
That's uh, a Boston team that's benefited from the loser point. That's that's something that if I'm the Toronto Maple Leafs, I'm going, all right, like we can get this team because their record is bolstered by a hollow 15 points. Am I too harsh here on the Boston uh, Bruins? I think you might be a little bit harsh. Okay. I, I'm okay so to, I'm he, okay to take my, that stance. Yeah, I'm okay here's my to take only that question stance. for you. Sure. Of those, of those overtimes. 15 losses, 20, yeah, yeah. what, 22, well, How 22? many times do they come back in that? That'd be a question that I would ask. I don't That'd know. That'd be the first one. I don't know the answer to that. How many leads did they let slip away? That's the other question. So to me, it's, a, it's one of two things. Like you've got a team that has either battled its way back They've gone through the adversity. They figured out a way to get back into those games, a la the 15 overtime losses, and then they just lose it in, in OT. If on the flip side to what you're saying is that maybe they've lost those leads. Maybe they couldn't figure out. They did against you know, Edmonton. They did, yeah, but that's. That's Edmonton's a small sample size. Very small sample size. But it size. falls into that number. But at the same time, I'm looking at their goal differential. They don't really give up a whole lot of goals. Okay. They don't score a whole lot of goals. Okay. If you're looking in the, the Atlantic division, they were 15 goals for. They're at a plus 43. They're 24, 11, and 6 at home. And they're 23, 9, and 9 on the road. Okay. Like, none of that really suggests, like... Weakness? It's a bad team. I think if anything... I'm not saying they're a bad team. I'm just saying they're flawed. Yeah, 100% they're flawed. I don't... Well, of course, when you turn they're, over they're that much the of the roster... They're not the that they were last year. I completely agree with that. Okay, I won't okay. even argue with that. Okay. But I'm just saying, they finished with 109 points, Tommy. And yeah, regardless, Respect. regardless Respect. of the fact that they went to overtime 15 times, or they have 15... 20, lo- they have 20 15 22, losses. 23 times plus. Yeah. Regardless of that fact, they still have 109 points. No matter which way you spin that, they've got more points than the Leafs. And everybody's sitting there saying the Leafs are this wagon. Well, I don't think the Leafs are. Yeah, if Twitter says they are. Well, Twitter is stupid, but whatever. So if I'm Boston, I know that I'm, I'm, I'm able to be in close games. I, I'm comfortable there. Because okay. I don't give up much. Yeah, I don't score much, but... Once again, you're fifth in the Atlantic Division in goals four. So that's not a terrible number by any stretch of the imagination. When you look at Toronto, well, they gave, they've given up 263 goals against. Like, that's a lot of goals. So are they, is, is Toronto as comfortable being in those 2-1 games, those 3-2 games? I would, that's where it's going to be the difference. I would assume no. So if I'm Toronto, I'm saying Austin Matthews, Mitch Marner, William Nylander, John Tavares, go score a bunch of goals. And then we're going to hope and pray to hang on. Yeah, but how are they going to score those goals when Boston just locks it down? Because if I'm Boston, I'm going to say clog up the middle of the ice, make them work to get to the net front. Because historically, Mitch Marner, Nylander, Tavares in the playoffs, eh. Can they score off the rush? That'd be the question. But if I'm Boston, I'm not going to be trying to trade chance for chance. So you're playing conservative. I'm going to play very conservative. And I'm going to tell you that you're going to have to figure out a way to get through my five guys, somehow get to the net, and bang in goals in front of the net. Mm. And be greasy. Because Boston's going Boston's to drag Toronto into a street fight. If you were to say the key for Toronto to win this series is to play greasy, I would look up and down the Toronto lineup and I would go... That's not a greasy lineup. Toronto's? Yeah. Well, apparently everybody uh, thinks for whatever odd reason because they've got uh, Edmondson and Domi and Bertuzzi and Reeves. And the list goes on with the recent ads. Re- I just, I literally Reeves, just saw I, I think this. I it's a non factor. I agree. Thank you. Bertuzzi, Thank great. You for saying Domi that. can be great. Thank you for saying that. Thank you for saying that. Because, well, hey, Ryan Reeves in the, in regular season hockey is great. I got no issues sure. with him. But when we're talking about the playoffs where a lot of this stuff doesn't happen. Non-factor. Well, non-factor. So is he dressing? That'd be the first question. I would, oh, assume, I would assume no. Are you sure? What, what's he going to do, Belzy? 
What's he going to do? Go hit a few guys. Okay, so you want to establish a tone. Yeah. That's why you got Ryan Reed. He's going to play five minutes. Yeah, that's right on average. Is it worth it? Well, if you can play basically 11 and 6, that's what you're doing. If you're putting Reeves out and you're hoping within that five to nine minutes that he plays, he becomes a factor because he's he's running guys out of the rink or he's he's creating a little bit of intimidation. Mm-hmm. Once again, I, I don't necessarily disagree with you. I don't you think the Bruins are going to be Because the, the playoffs are completely different. But once again, for me, I'm looking at this Bruins team and I'm saying, okay, I'm going to drag you into a street fight, Toronto. I'm going to scrum it after every whistle. I'm going after Marner. I'm going after Tavares. They've got I'm going pretty after boys Nylander. over there. I'm going after Matthews, yes. and I'm going to make it hard for them every single time they're on the ice. Whether they're going to get hit, whether they're going to get a glove to the face, something's happening. I am, Tell me after seven. If the street fight happens, yep. I am eager to see the response from those skilled Leafs guys. That's, if they're not going to take the BS and they're going to push back or they're yep. going to handle it, I don't want to see them get rolled. But if I'm Boston, you're banking on that, right? 100%. You're playing the odds at this point. Yeah. But if I'm Nylander, if I'm Matthews, if I'm Marner, and if, Tavares, and if Reeves I'm is back. on the ice, well, and if Reeves is on the ice, sure. Right? If he is, if he is, and he tries to do the same thing, well, I'm skating away. Exactly. I'm gonna poke your legs, make you squirrely, and then I'm just gonna skate away, and I'm just gonna chirp you because at the end of the day, most people in the league aren't fighting Ryan Reeves anyway. No, that's a good point. That's a good point. What say you? 780-218-9999 or hit us up in the nasty chat on our EST YouTube channel. It is Hello Hockey and portions of this hour brought to you by Nexar Equipment. Nexar Equipment, your partner in construction and energy providing robust machinery and reliable services. Nexar Equipment, where every repair is a promise of performance and reliability. Uh, this is a great conversation. We have two other games happening tomorrow, Belzy, as we roll into the meat of the postseason on Monday. The two games, or actually we have a bunch of games tomorrow. Pardon me, it wasn't just two and two. Uh, Tampa at Florida, Washington at New York Rangers, uh, the Avs visit Winnipeg, and the Canucks get the Nashville Predators. I think this Battle of Florida is going to be insane. Yeah, it's going to be good. It's going to be really good. Is that the sneaky series to watch? <coughs> that that game tomorrow, by the way, 10.30 Mountain Time gets going. I still like Florida. Okay. But if somebody's going to have a chance at beating Florida and they're going to drag them into a street fight, I would assume it is the Tampa Bay Lightning. Of all the teams in, this, in the East? Yeah. Rangers. Against the Panthers? Yeah. How how do you stack up Rangers caps then? I think the Rangers are going to beat them in five. I look at that series. I look at what the caps did over the course of the regular season. They're a minus 37. Okay. That is like not many teams make it when they have a minus differential. They don't score. The Islanders did it too. Yep. They do. But they've scored 220 goals, Mm -hmm. and they've given up 257. Why are you looking at goals for and against? Why is that important to you? Because it's a massive sample size. In 82 games, if I've only scored 220 goals, which basically, don't quote my math, but it gives me 2.5 goals against, or goals for every single night. Okay. But I got a team like the Rangers that, once again, they lock it down too, and they can score, and they're heavy. And they've got skill. And experience. And experience. Tell me where Washington is going to be able to, to get past them. I can't. To, yeah, so that's why I keep looking at the goals for and goal against. That doesn't paint the full picture, but it gives me a small sampling of what it could be. Okay. Because when a team historically doesn't score very much in the, the regular season, they don't necessarily go up in the playoffs. When things get harder... And things get locked down in the playoffs. Right. So that's why I'm saying that, and that's why I keep referring to this, is because it's, it is a factor. 257 goals against, well, like, that's not great. Don't and you have a big Rangers team that just, they can score any way that you want. Okay, that's out east. 
It's out east. Out west. The one that I'm really interested in is Winnipeg, Colorado. And why is that? Yeah, this is this is close. Colorado can score. Winnipeg can lock you down. Big time. Winnipeg won the season series. How much does that matter? Uh, it does not matter because playoffs is a different animal. But this is one where I'm, I'm actually very excited about this one because it's just Colorado's high-octane offense. Winnipeg's lineup is very deep. They were one of the best teams in the NHL over the course of the year. They had a little bit of a stretch where they fell off. But right now, they're 8-2 and two in their last their last 10. Mm-hmm. So they're feeling good coming to the playoffs. Mm-hmm. They've won eight in a row. Feel good coming to the Edison playoffs. Edison won nine in a row last 100%. year. 100%. 18-2 in a row, Yeah, by you the just way. feel good about yourself. They lost game one. Feel good about yourself. Okay. It's all that matters to me. Okay. Coming to the playoffs, being like, you know what? We're playing some of our best hockey. Now, that matchup right there is that you've got Hellebuck playing unbelievable hockey. You've got McCarr, you've got McKinnon, you've got Rantanen, you've got all those guys on the other side. You can zip the puck around, but Winnipeg's lineup is deep. They don't have many holes. Very similar to what we talked about with Boston. Come through the middle. Try to figure out how to score. Joel says, hella buck. Ah, he's so good. What's it? So good. Rip City Sep says, first round of NHL playoffs are an elite two weeks of entertainment. Mm-hmm. So excited. Hope Oilers sweep so I can truly enjoy it. Stress-free. Rip City Step, the Oilers never do anything easy. We know this. <laughs> we know this. Maybe this year. Let's hope. Buckle up. It's the craziest thing because there's going to be a couple of elite teams that are going to be out in the first round. I think this Golden Knights Dallas series is going to be amazing. Yep. Amazing. I think those are the two best series that we possibly have in the playoffs right now. Joel adds East is weak. Uh, Jason says Marchand is going to give the stinky glove to every leaf. He's going to be licking so many faces. Ew. Ew. That was one of the grossest things I think I've ever seen in the NHL. If he did that to you. I don't know what I'd do, Tom, so don't ask me that question. I'm sorry. I'd probably do nothing and skate back to the bench in shock that a guy just licked me on the ice. You want to taste my sweat, buddy? That's cool. Ugh. Gross. Yeah, that was that was gross. I'm usually a fan of his antics. He's a great hockey player. But that stuff just that was weird. That was weird. That was over the line for sure. Text us 780-218-9999. It is Hello Hockey Playoff Primer as we roll along. David Pagnata will be joining us in about uh, 25 minutes or so as we get set for what should be a phenomenal postseason. The pre Preseason, who cares? Regular season, great. Postseason, let's go. It's going to be so, so good. Uh, all right, Belzy. Do you want to look ahead to Edmonton and L.A. really quickly? Uh, let's stir up the nasty chat a little bit. Oh, boy. Here we go. Do you like this? Kings and six. Shut, Just kidding. Just up. kidding. I'm As kidding, if. everybody. Man, you should have saw the death stare that I just got from YouTube Trev. I thought you're a pro. Just kidding. I thought you're a pro. I'm pro. Unbiased. I am. I am unbiased, but I just disagree with that take. From I did that a, on purpose. I did yeah, that on yeah, purpose because yeah. I wanted to just see the the nasty chat just go off. Yeah. How dare you, Belzy? Bell said. How dare LA you? L.A. in six. Bell's, ah. Belzy, you don't know. Ah. You don't know anything. Uh, go, go. This. Uh, I think there was in five. Yeah. I think they've got uh, L.A. figured out. I think they know how to beat that 1-3-1. One, one. Yeah. Um, I, I just think the Oilers are a much deeper team. They've got more experience. To me, that's a five-gamer. I'm with you on that. Yeah. I respect the LA Kings. So do I. But they don't have the horses anymore. I think that trade with Dubois, and we've talked about this multiple times, mm-hmm. I think that's come back to bite them. Because you got rid of the best depth line or third line possibly in the NHL at the time. And you gave that was all, Aya Follow. Yep. You gave them all, all away. Here. Velarde was excellent. Yep. Great for Winnipeg when he was healthy this year. Yeah. I at PLD, I don't 
I don't know. I don't know. When he wants to be a factor, he can be a factor. This screams Edmonton, this series. Yes, it does. It screams Edmonton. Yeah. The goaltending is a, a motivated Cam Talbot seeking revenge against his old team that spurned him. They did. They did. Yeah, Six, but seven years ago. They, they rode him way too hard. I love Talbot. He's a great guy. Like, I think at that time when Talbot was here, it was a bit unfair because they didn't have another goaltender. They had Laurent Brossois. And they just basically, he wasn't ready. He wasn't ready. And Talbot comes in and he just gets, he gets every game. Like, that poor guy was broken. Took him a couple years to rebound. He's starting to figure it out again. I'm glad he kept his career going. It's awesome. He's a great human being. Yeah. It's, uh, but that doesn't matter when you talk about doesn't matter. The oil, the oil what? are going to be high you say, octane. You say into the mic what you want to say. It's the playoffs. I think you said it's the playoffs. What'd you say? You said it's the playoffs. Look at him. He's chirping over there. Yeah. I was agreeing with you. I was oh, like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, when we're talking playoffs. Playoffs. Yeah, but let's go. It's I'm five games. Feisty trap oil. today. <laughs> five games. All right. Uh, D-Nice says <laughs> Oilers in five. Uh, Jen says Oilers in five. Jay Anon says, here we go. Let's hear about the one three one. All everyone talks about with the Kings. So uh, it's the only McClellan, team that's ever mastered the one three one. Have they mastered it, honestly? What well, did the what did, they were pretty good, man? What did the Chicago Blackhawks do to them the other day? Because that game had a lot of implications. That would be an important game yes. to me. And they almost pooched it. That's a style that suits the LA Kings, and they figured it out because they played it for how many years? It's just some no, no, no. Todd many, McClellan. How many other teams have done it? How many other teams are playing uh, that style? Boring hockey. Well, the Islanders. The Islanders play. don't play one through one. Okay, who else is playing a one through one? That's my point. So when you're, I think they might be the only team that actually truly plays a one through one. Arizona used to. Years ago, they would wait, and they'd wait, and yep. they'd wait, and then they'd take their chance. The Lightning under Boucher used to do the same thing. That was a long time ago. long time ago. So they might be the only team in the NHL that plays a 1-3-1. One, one. Yeah. So, yeah, it's hard to break through if it, if it works because you're forcing teams to dump a puck. Mm-hmm. The back defenseman just gets the puck, and then he just breaks it out. It's hard to play against. So, yeah, people talk about it because it's the only team that's doing it, and they're effective with it can't tell me that they're not good I'm they don't have the high octane offense like some of these other teams do but yet they're still considered one of the upper echelon teams in the western conference text us 780-218-9999 or get in on the nas i love this as soon as we said oilers it's just people like boom 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 I'm like, so oh, of course here we go here we go Jen, Oilers in five, like I said before. Jay Anon's curious about this one. T. Willison says, I've got the Oilers in five as well. Uh, no one ever mentions any other team's systems, yet every quote-unquote media personality, that's all they talk about, LOL. Am I a media personality? You are. You're an analyst. Oh, man. And you're a I'm host. Swore you're there. a co-host. That's from Jay Anon, that text. Uh, Big Johnson says, Oilers in four unless Talbot can steal one. Jason says, send Doughty into retirement. Jesse says, lose game one, like <laughs> they do, and sweep it. Oil in five. Uh, D. Nice, great name. Different team, different time. And then uh, Janon also adds, quote unquote, hockey psychology on YouTube did a video on the 131 and all the winning teams that have used it more than you would think. List them, please. Show your work. Show me. Who is hockey psychology? I'm sure it's pretty good, actually. Yeah, though, probably. But- yeah, um, I'll have to check that out, actually. Yeah, I'd actually be curious to know the the teams that I've actually won with it. And that's not a chirp. Yeah. That's actually being very real. Sincere. Sincere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Lance says, you can't win with the one three one in this current NHL. Is that true? Because Jay Anon's saying, there's people out there saying that their one three one has been successful. I don't think, I think, and teams can change their system in-game. Like, that's another thing, too. Well, they change in and out all the time. Right. There's constantly different lines yeah, have different. Systems. They're constantly tinkering. Yeah. The biggest difference for me right now is that LA just can't score. They don't have the ability. Like they were. They should team. be able to score now. They're a better team last year to me. I think they're they're sh- a shallower team. Yeah. 
And I know they went and got Pierre Luc Dubois, but I'm Belzy. Like I said it in the off season. I ain't worried about that. I was like, I don't like this trade. I don't like getting rid of Ifalo. I don't yeah. like getting rid of Velarde. Pierre Luc Dubois, when he wants to be a factor, can be a factor. So the only team that's given up less goals in the Western Conference mm -hmm. is the Winnipeg Jets. Okay. Winnipeg gave up 199. LA's given up 250. So clearly, the 131 works for them. The problem is, you've got horses in the Western Conference with Dallas, Winnipeg, Colorado. Nashville scores a ton. Vancouver's right. been good on the offensive side. Edmonton scores a ton. You don't have the horses. Vegas. So if you can do that defensively, but they had some guys that can actually carry the mail on the offensive end, right. and I'm not trying to take shots at, at LA, I'm not saying that they don't have guys that can put the puck in the net, but based off the teams that I just mentioned, they don't have the same offensive capabilities as those other groups, those other teams. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. And that's the biggest difference is that they just can't hang because you have to be able to figure out how to score. Jesse Young via the Nasty Chat says, does trap hockey actually work? The only teams to attach their identity to that style and win the whole thing would be the 2010s Kings and the 2000s Devils. Well, let's get Jay. He's Jay's giving me a list here. Where is it? He's what do you got? One. What do you got? I don't know when, but he's supposed to be giving us a list. Oh, he's doing a list? Us, okay. Show us your work, Jay, so we can talk about Love this. It. I like this. This is a good conversation. It is. It's a great conversation. This is, a, this is why we do this show. This is why we do the show. Minnesota with uh, Mr. But, Lemaire almost well, won it. Well, you were a part of that. We almost won it. Well, before I got there, they almost won it. They had a nice little run there, for sure. What they get to? The conference final? Yeah. When you, you were a black ace? I was on the roster. You were on the roster. <coughs> Are you okay? Yeah, it's okay. this place. Uh, I was on the roster. Um, we played Anaheim. Yeah. Good series until about game three when there was a bit of a line brawl. Ooh. Brad May grabbed Kim Janssen. Kim Janssen. Kim Janssen. Great Swedish defenseman. Suckered him. Brad May's an awesome guy. By Great the way. dude. Great guy. Great dude. That was the end of Kim Janssen. Oh, boy. And that was the end of us. So he was an X factor. He was an X factor. By he doing was, he was our best dirty. defenseman. And unfortunately, Mr. May put him out. Ah. And we didn't have an answer after that because you had young Getzlaff, young Perry, you had all sorts of guys. Penner, Kunitz. They were good. Niedemeyer. Yeah, they were They so went on good. to win the Stanley Pronger? Cup. Pronger. Yeah. Niedemeyer. Boschman. He was really good. Yeah. Gosh, man, was really good. All right, uh, 780-218-9999. It is Hello Hockey. As we roll along on this Saturday, we will get to our uh, entrant into the Fly YEG LVCVA slash EST uh, giveaway to Vegas. Uh, we'll get to that in about 20 minutes time. After that, David Pagnotta will join us. A lot has happened. We're doing a playoff primer. And with that, let's uh, roll on. All right. Tom Gazzola, Sean Bell, YouTube Trev with you. Text us, 780-218-9999. Get into the nasty chat. Let us know your thoughts uh, as the Oilers and uh, the LA Kings get set to go. The Dallas Stars with the Vegas Golden Knights. The Winnipeg Jets with the Colorado Avalanche. Oh, my goodness. It's going to be so much fun. And then... Uh, the Canucks in Nashville, this is going to be great. Today, it's going to be uh, fantastic to see playoff hockey. The Islanders and the Hurricanes, the Bruins and the Leafs. Let's go. Tampa and Florida, the Battle of Florida. The Rangers and the Caps, the Caps sneaking in there. So many fun series just about to get underway. I am super duper pumped up, and I say that like a nerd because I am a nerd for hockey. And I have no qualms saying that. The uh, first round in yes, the NHL Belzy. is unbelievable. I know. That's why I'm I'm in love with it. I'm in how awe do, of it. How do they make the second, third, and finals the same intensity? You can't. Can't. It's yeah. Impossible. 
Portions of this hour brought to you by Local Public Eatery, where you can enjoy a great late night happy hour. Also, our dear friend Dean Lowry, who is the regional manager for Western Canada, says it's the best place to check out playoff hockey. Canucks, Oilers, no flames this year. But he says, hit the patio. They got the TVs out there. They got Bache Ball, Jasper Avenue here in Edmonton, Eau Claire, great location down in Calgary. Kitsilano in Vancouver, a couple of locations in Vancouver, also Southampton Common. Great spot. You were there yesterday, were you not? I was. You invited me. I was busy. I was working yeah, on the gun the show. Gym. I was working on the gun show. Yeah, you got to put more work in, brother. I know. <laughs> How was it yesterday? <laughs> that was good. We just had a quick business meeting and... Uh, oh! It was, it was quite... It was busy when I walked in. Yeah. By the time I left, very quiet. I'm sure it picked up, though. Probably after like Friday. Friday. Sun was out. It that, wasn't uh, Alberta after was cold. work rush. Yeah, the after work rush. Would there was a good, good energy, I will say, uh, in the the core of the city. There's here a bit is. of a buzz. We're getting it. Yep. Yep. It's starting it to come. Sorry, Calgary, Vancouver. I'm sure you're feeling it right now. Can we just talk to Vancouver for a second? Oh, please. Vancouver. My friends in Vancouver. James Sabolsky. I just want to say, Dan Murphy, whatever happens, please don't light your city on fire. You have a beautiful city, and it's it's a game. I know I'm going to get accosted for that, but at the end of the day, it is a game, and I know it has the emotional roller coaster, and it, it does. Your mood is set for the week. I get it. I'm there with football, but please don't burn your city. I'm sure you're going to do great. You like the Canucks in that series. I never said that. Oh, <laughs> here we are. <laughs> I just said, I'm sure you're going to do great. That's like, a, I kind of like, ho- a- I, I kind of hope that it, the next round, knock on wood, so uh-huh, I don't uh-huh. jinx anybody. Okay. I hope it'd be Canucks versus Oilers. Cause I think that'd be awesome for Western Canada. Hasn't happened since what? The late eighties, early nineties, maybe. I know they played each other in the 80s in the playoffs, but... Uh, Man, that would be awesome. Right? I'm going to double-check that right now. Could you imagine Oilers... Oilers and Flames should have been a thing if the Flames didn't lose Kachuk, if they didn't yeah. lose Gaudreau. Man, don't burn your city down, Vancouver. Edmonton, same thing. Don't burn this beautiful city down. Yeah, let's not do that. Please don't and do and that. no fights. No fighting. No fights amongst. No fighting. Like we're not going down to Joey Moss Square and beating the brakes Moss off your, your the Moss Pit. Don't beat the brakes off your fellow Oilers fan. Yeah, don't do that. Oilers and Canucks have not played each other since 1992. Edmonton won that series four to two. Uh, what else? What else? Yeah, and then they played each other in '86. Edmonton won that series. In All right. Three. Well, now I'm cheering for Vancouver because I want I want to see Oilers Vancouver second round because we just okay. talked about how good the first round of playoffs is. They're the best. If you have that series, all of a sudden, man, electric. Okay, we're on the Canucks. Jasmine Texan seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine. Belzy, <laughs> what's your honest prediction on the Canucks Pred series? Who do you want to win? That one. Don't well, burn the city down. I just just said yeah. I want the Canucks to win. Now, that series to me is one of the biggest wild card series. Why? Because Nashville has been playing unbelievable hockey. They're hard to play against. They're very similarly built, actually, if you think about it. The way that to the, the, the styles that they play. To the Canucks? Styles that they play, yes. Go on. They don't have elite offense. So right now, 279 goals for for Vancouver. Right. 269 for Nashville. They had a ridiculous stretch of futility, followed by the canceling of the trip to the sphere. And ever since they did that, Nashville has been one of the best teams in the NHL they have guys that can work, guys that can grind, 
guys that can score. Okay. And they have unbelievable defense. Okay. Roman Yossi is arguably the best defenseman in the NHL. I agree with you. He's going to play 30-plus minutes in that entire series. Not surprised. So when I look at that matchup, I think it's a better matchup for Nashville than some of us let on. I'm not going to tell you who's going to win that series because I, I, don't actually, buy I have that. no idea. I have no idea. But I'll see, I don't buy that. Which part? That, that, that Nashville lines up well against the Canucks. Really? Yes. Tell me more. I'll t- I'm going to yeah, show yeah, my yeah. work. Yeah, I love, work. I love how Dusty and Eric say, show your work. Yeah, go ahead. Let's I used go. to hate that in school. Yeah. I'm going to counter you with this. <laughs> yes. Uh, style of play, I'll agree. Like, yes. If they want to go uh, run and gun with, with the Canucks, yep. fantastic. Bring it on. I don't like... I don't like Nashville's chances of winning that style of game. Okay. I will suggest to you that the Nashville Predators have one really good line, and that's it. Okay. And they have great defense, like you mentioned. They have one of the best in Roman Yossi at the top of his game. I'm with you. Yes. They have an excellent goaltender who can steal a game, probably put it together for a series, maybe Cujo a series for you, a la 1997-1998. In, in UC Saros. Yes. But I would suggest to you, Sean Bell, that this team, once you get past that first line, once you neutralize Ryan O'Reilly, Philip Forsberg, and Gustav Nyquist, you're letting Vancouver's line three, two, three, and four run roughshod over Colton Sissons, Jason Zucker, and Mark Jankowski. Run roughshod over Tommy Novak, Anthony Beauvillier, and Luke Evangelista. Run rough shot over Michael McCarron, Cole Smith, and Kiefer Sherwood. I think the Canucks can overwhelm with their off or their forward depth. That's my that, that that's, is that's, that's what 100% I feel. Fair. That's what I feel. So if we look back, do you remember when we had uh, when David was in town and we were live on location at uh, local, local Jazz Brad, Yes, and we looked time. we looked at that roster. We we all laughed about that and said, realistically. These guys need a second line to push everybody else down. Correct. We all laughed about it. Yeah. I, it was, a, it was a light time, chuckle for it me, was, not yeah, a full-on it, it was. Yes, I agree with you. Thank you. But at the same time, I sit there and I look at that roster, and you have high-octane offense. Yeah. Followed by guys that try to lock it down. Right. So we, we've looked at a bunch of the different series across the playoffs. Yeah. And we've said, okay, certain teams got to play certain ways to win. And when I look at Nashville and what they've done over the last little bit, I'm saying it's a harder matchup for Vancouver than people think it is. Because, yeah, like Vancouver's gone out of its way. Like, okay, so JT Miller, Pedersen, Besser, that's their top line. They're actually similarly built because outside of – that Vancouver line, the next guy you've got is Hornick. And then you got Garland. Granted, they put up more points, but I mean, Hornick's got five goals. He's a defenseman. Great. Quinn Hughes but is excellent. Garland, Lindholm. What has Lindholm done since he's been in Vancouver? Great start with them. Hog, I, Hoglander. Hoglander he, can be great. He can be, but he but hasn't he, been over the course of the, the season. You got Dakota Joshua. He's having a great year. He's having a great year. He's got 32 points. He's got 84, or he's got 60 he pips. Could, I think he could go wild on Nashville. Over who? Any one of those second, third, or fourth lines with the press. They're the same built. They're no. They're similarly built. I think Vancouver has way better talent. They might have slight, slightly better talent. I think it's way better. Because right now, I look at this, okay. I like O'Reilly, Connor Garland. O'Reilly's got 69 points. Yeah. Novak's okay. got 45 points. This is more or less the exact same thing. Bellsy, just take a, I, just take, a, take a screenshot of Vancouver. Take a screenshot of Nashville. Vancouver's look at the list of players. Team. I do agree with you that I think Vancouver's deeper. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it's going to be a cakewalk for Vancouver, though. This is a hard team to play against. Okay. I'm not going to disagree give with you, that. But they I... don't give you anything for free, and their defense is very good in Nashville. It's good enough to the point where they could probably contend with the quote-unquote deep lineup of the Canucks. I, I think this series goes six, but I think Vancouver ultimately will overwhelm Nashville. Like, Barry doesn't even play. 
And he's a pretty good defenseman. Well, there's a lot there. <laughs> there is a lot. Vibe there. Daddy and you're, Barry you're Trotz don't get along. You're 100% yeah, right. Yeah, there's now. a lot going yeah. on there. And he, I, I, at, yeah. at the end of the day, I just I, I look at this Nashville team. Yeah. And I, I look, I say to myself, yeah, you guys might need a second line they to do. truly become a contending team. We've, I don't think we've ever disputed that. Right. Okay, fair. But at fair. the same time, the way that they play one through four is they don't change what they do. They come at you in waves. They make it hard. They don't give up anything for free, and they make you grind it out. Okay. And they have elite defense behind that. Yes. They have an elite defense man. They have an elite defenseman who's going to play 30 to 35 minutes, followed by McDonough, who's no slouch in his own right. No. But then you go Jeremy Lozano. And then you got Dante Carrier. Alexander Carrier. 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 He's your third D man. Yeah. So I, I don't need to play those other defensemen. We just talked, we just laughed about the, the Anaheim series versus us in, in Minnesota. Well, guess what? Tell me who those other defensemen were on, on Anaheim. Bo Shemaine. He was part of the three, yep. Niedermeyer. Yep. Pronger. Yep. Uh, who were the other three? Boy, who That's my there? point. Willie is Mitchell? That, no, he wasn't even there. So that's my point, is that in the playoffs, if you have a big three like that, well, tell me who why you would try to pull Roman Yossi off the ice. Pronger well, played thir- half an hour. Pronger at that time played 30 plus minutes. Niedermeyer played 30 plus minutes. Boschman played 30 pr- plus minutes. And then you think you had Kent Huskins who played probably oh, yeah. 18 minutes. So those three guys Kent were on Huskins. the ice at every single turn. Hmm. That's all I'm going to do if I'm Nashville. I'm going to give my three big boys, I'm using that word lightly, big boys. <laughs> All the heavy minutes. They're big boys in terms of importance. Yes. I think Vancouver will overwhelm them in that series. I do like the fight Nashville can put up, and you make a very 100%. good argument, but I don't have faith in the Preds in that series, Belzy. That's the beauty of this. Andrew Texan says, I will say Nashville was 4-5-1 and one in their last 10 coming into the playoffs. I think the goalies cancel each other out, and Van has better depth, and that will make the difference. Thank you, Andrew. I'm cheering for Vancouver, FYI. I'm not cheering for anybody. I'm an impartial member of the media. Ugh. Don't give me that. I'm cheering for Vancouver because I want to see Vancouver Edmonton in the second round. I do want to see that. I think that will be chaos. I just think it's going to be a really hard matchup. Keep them. those texts coming in. 780. I do think it's good. The playoffs are going to be great. This is going to be fantastic, and in the West especially. Yeah. 780 and uh, get in via the nasty chat as well. We're doing a playoff primer. Uh, Dave Pagnotta coming up shortly. We do have to get to Toe Drag Swag. Do we have that today, Trev? Uh, bueno, this guy is the best. He's on fire. He's very good. Very, very good. Also, um, there was a text that came in. I think it was Joel... Yes, it was. Joel says, hey, Brad Malone has retired. I, I want to touch on this. Uh, Brad Malone, if you don't know him, played for the Avalanche, played for the Hurricanes, played for the Oilers. Uh, he is wrapping up his pro playing career with the Bakersfield Condors. They begin the postseason, I believe, on Tuesday. And uh, I am partial to Brad Malone. I respect and appreciate him very much. In the six, seven years, he's been a member of the Oilers organization. This is a, a hockey guy. Yeah. And I think Bugsy will be, that is his nickname. His cousin is Ryan Malone, also goes by Bugsy. It's obviously the last name. Yep. This is a guy of good hockey uh, lineage. Uh, he's married into the Muller family. And I think he's a guy that will, if he wants to continue on in hockey, uh, he's a good man. And and Belzy, uh, a guy that is a good testament to sticking with it, staying in the game, Character going a long way. Yep. You you played pro hockey for years, you, over a decade. We played together. You played um, with Bugsy? Yeah, his first year, um, which was my last in North America. Um, great kid, great guy. Yeah. Um, perseverance for sure. Yeah. Wasn't the most skilled guy. No. Wasn't the toughest guy. Did a lot of really good things, but he was a guy that just was a heart and soul player. And he, there was never a time where you looked over and you're like, you know what? I'm not sure what he's going to give to you. He's given everything. He's going to give you absolutely everything that he has. And for him to play as long as he did, unbelievable. 
Brad Malone retiring yeah. at the I'm end gonna of the. I'm going to give him a couple, couple we're, clicks. We're doing some clicks. He's uh, yeah. round of clicks. Round uh, of unbelievable. Clicks. So great career. Um, hats off to you. Yes. Tip of the cap to Brad Malone. My brother loves his sticks, like the, the the pattern. Yeah. Bugsy gave him a couple, and my brother's like, I love those sticks. You know what my brother uses them in? Ball hockey. Oh, no, we're not doing that either. We're not doing that. No, Ball hockey's for guys trouble. who can't skate. You'll get in trouble. My brother was so mad at me when I was like, hey, ball hockey's for guys that can't skate. He's like, no, it is a real sport. Didn't I'm your not mom a big yell boy. at you too? My mom got mad. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Stop tripping. Don't make Stop fun of your brother. your brother. I love my brother. I saw him last night. It was good to see him. Anyway, uh, uh, tip of the cap to Brad Malone, uh, a true pro's pro. And, uh, Joel, thank you for bringing that up. Uh, hopefully there's a long run for Bugsy in uh, the AHL playoffs in pursuit of a Calder Cup. YouTube, Trev, how are we doing over there? You're about to make a, a phone call? Yeah, yeah, I'll be making that uh, probably right after we'll play Toe Drag Swag. If Ooh, that works with baby, you. here we go. Toe All drag right, swag. thank you. All right, time now to get to Toe Drag Swag, brought to you by the good folks at Backscape. You got the 2.0 right here, fantastic stuff. Use code HELLO10 for 10% off the advanced and deluxe 2.0 kits. Stay smooth. Gentlemen, Belzy, before we run Toe Drag Swag, what do we need to know about this week's edition? Well, I tried to give a little bit of a different spin on it. Obviously, you're looking at, you know, nice goals all the time, some of the nicest goals that were out there. However, there was a couple clutch goals. Oh. And I was trying to trying to trying to find the clutch goals of the week. However, I only put one of them in because it's hard. Like you want to still live up to the toe drag swag pedigree. Right. What we're trying to put out there. But it was hard. But I had one. I had one clutch goal. Um, it was a good week of, uh, of goals, but I feel like it came back to kind of playoff reality. Like if you look mm -hmm. at playoff okay. goals, okay, they're all net front. They're all quick passes. They're one-timers yeah. from slots. They're greasy, tip-ins. That's what I found for the most part, but it was a good week of toe drag swag. All right, let's take a look. Toe drag swag presented by Backscape. Let's have a look. That was Toe Drag Swag. And uh, Belzy, as is tradition, who was the winner? The winner. And why? Kaprizov. Yeah. Bank shot behind the net, off the head. A la Connor McDavid. Yeah. He can do it too. It was nice. It was really nice. Was nice. I, uh, I'm not going to lie to you. I voted for Team Canada. Yeah. I, I kind of wanted to see one of the clutch goals win. Like I said, I only put really one of them in. But uh, the national championship goal was, uh, was a pretty nice one as well. Rieger Lorenz, who played for the Okotoks Oilers. Uh huh. Great to see him doing good things, obviously, in the NCAA. Uh, the women's edition of the Golden Goal was fantastic. Yes, it was. But today, this week, belongs to Kirill. Uh, that was Danielle Sardakny, was it that not? That was. That's Steve's daughter? That's correct. Of course it is. Uh, the product. Good man, that's Steve Sardacne, and uh, good to see the Sardacnes at the national level with our, our women's national team. Absolutely tremendous. All right. That was Toe Drag Swag. Uh, use code HELLO10 for 10% off the advanced and deluxe 2.0 kits. All right, keep those texts coming in, 780-218-9999, and hit us up via the nasty chat. We're just laughing at YouTube Trev back there doing his thing. You seen some texts? You want to get to anything, or are we just going to make fun of Trev? We could just make fun of I love Trev. making fun of Trev. Jason says, come on, Trevor, call. Call. The little guy's on the phone right now. He's on there. Lance says, Vancouver is going to get upset. They will be overwhelmed in the moment, and Nashville doesn't mess around. They don't mess around. That's from Lance. They play a hard-style hockey. Like, it is, uh, 
there's those games that just become grinding games and they just they try to drag you through it. That's mm. what Nashville does. Let's go to the nasty chat now. Six Pack says Jared Bednar had a long AHL career. Look at him now. Excellent coach. 100%. Right? Uh, VA says long live ball hockey. Ball hockey is for everybody. It is. Hockey is for everybody, which is very important. And I Don't love get him started. street hockey, road hockey. And our sport is phenomenal. I just, just the guys who take it too seriously in ball hockey. Let's, let's. This is like getting Tom on the ball hockey conversation is very similar to when he talks about Tortorella. Stop it. It gets him fired up. Don't. It is his red button. Don't. Factual. Don't push it. Okay. Well, just saying. Am I wrong? No, you're right. That's why. Yeah. Could you imagine if Torts was the Oilers head coach? No. What he would do for this? No. No. Let's stop right there. Let's go to our call. Who do we have on the line? YouTube Trev. We've got Jen on the line. Let's oh, go. Yeah. Let's go. Jen. Yeah, Jen. All right. Finally, Jen. Uh, okay. You are now entered into the draw. It goes on the 26th on the morning show. Jen, you can exhale and breathe. Are you relieved, Jen? I am so relieved. It took forever for me to qualify. I blame Trev. So do I. <laughs> I know. Well, it's actually Maddie's fault. So. Oh, <laughs> we're, uh, we're sewering even, a even better. We're sewering a wanic. I love it. He's not even here. To, he's probably watching right now at home in his palatial 25th floor estate overlooking Ice <laughs> District in beautiful downtown Edmonton. Uh, Jen, congrats. And uh, thank you. Your experiences in Vegas. You've been, I'm assuming. Yes. No. Maybe so. We've never been to Vegas, and my husband and I have actually never been on vacation together in 16 years. Come so, on. Whoa. It was an experience, yeah. Belzy, really quickly, give Jen a couple of pointers when they make their – if they get the the win, if they make their way to Vegas, where do they need to go? Uh, well, you definitely got to go check out some speakeasies. I think the Lazy River is another good one. Lazy River at uh, the Mar- – no, Mandalay Bay? Yes. Yes, that's the one. And then where else? Sphere? And then the Sphere – and what's the place where they have uh, all the little kind of like smaller pools? It's a uh, massive screen. Oh, Circa you know Stadium Swim. S- yes, in, that's the one. On Fremont Street. Jen, a, a couple of recommendations on top of the Cirque du Soleil Thank show. Thank you. Yes, so we got your back. Uh, you are in the draw. Congratulations, the last one. Uh, be well. Thanks for tuning in, Jen, and uh, good luck. Save the best for last. Thank you so much. There we go. Jen is nice in. Nice work, yes. She is in. Uh, of course, uh, it is the Edmonton Sports Talk. Fly Y-E-G-L-V-C-V-A. Trip down to Vegas. Uh, <sighs> nonstop flights, accommodations, three nights, and uh, tickets to Cirque du Soleil. Check out uh, Fly Y E G www.flyyeg.com and the LVCVA. And that's the last time we have to throw out all those acronyms. Congratulations to Jen and everybody who has qualified and entered to win. The draw goes on the 26th on the Nielsen Show. That morning, uh, Dusty and Lieutenant Eric will announce the winner. It is a random draw. Awanik, who is meticulous at everything, has it all planned out, and uh, I look forward to seeing who we give that trip away to. So uh, well done, Jen. She stuck with it. Good to see her get rewarded. Nicely done. Nicely done. Good stuff. All right, let's roll along here. It is Hello Hockey on Edmonton Sports Talk, Sportsnet Radio, of course. The playoffs are here. They kick off today. Uh, Tom Gazzola, Sean Bell, YouTube Trev with you, and uh, our dear friend and paisan, David Pagnotta standing by. He is the first star of the show. Brought to you by the good folks at Backscape, the fastest growing male grooming company on the planet. Just got better. Backscape has just launched their 2.0 friction fit handle, which is an upgrade. Ergonomic handle makes it even easier to get the hard to reach spots on your back. New titanium shave head for a smoother, more comfortable shave that respects your skin. Enhanced durability built to last to make your grooming routine easier and more reliable use the code hello 10 to get 10 percent off the advanced and deluxe 2.0 kits sleek new box great wrapping and packaging uh i got 
a DVD, uh, a backscape, Derek yep. Van Dees from NHL.com. He's like, I need one of those. I was like, all right, I can help you. Paisan, he's a well-groomed man. David Pagnotta, our Hello Hockey insider. Uh, but he respects what Backscape 2.0 can do. Right, Dave? Oh, 100%. Yeah, absolutely. I can't, I can't wait to get – got to get one of those for my dad. We can, we can hook we can you hook up. You up. Oh, that would be that'd be great. It's like the rainforest back there for him. So if, if <laughs> it's like my dad too, he's yeah. Italians, man. Look out! I know. Look they, out! They, they got to keep warm somehow. <laughs> oh, they do. Uh, all right, Paisan, are you coming? Are you coming back to Edmonton or no? Uh, if I if I do, it would be game five or seven if it okay. gets that far. So Bernstein already yeah. told me he's here. I believe he gets in tomorrow. So tomorrow. we're going. We're going to my favorite Italian place here in Edmonton. It's called Bianco. You've been there? Okay. Yep. I have. Fantastic Beauty. spot. Nice. So uh, I'm looking forward to DB for the third straight postseason. He will be our Hello, yeah. ho- not Hello Hockey, but uh, EST uh, Kings insider. So it's going to be great. Okay. Dave, uh, today's a playoff primer. We will talk playoffs, but a lot of stuff happened with the. Arizona Coyotes are off to Salt Lake City. They're going to be called the Utah HC, Utah Fury, Venom, Blizzard, one of those crappy names. Yetis. Yetis heard was the other day. better than any of those. But like I'm talking about the names that have been patented. Yeah, by... the Yetis was actually just patented. Was it actually? Yeah. Okay, good. It was. Uh, yep. Okay, good, 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 because that's a great name. But this whole situation, you've been telling us about this for months, finally happened. Give us the, the breakdown of why this thing kicked into high gear so quickly. I mean, look, you, you can't play in a 4,000-seat arena for three more seasons and and hope everything's going to be okay. I mean, the, the sponsor revenue that's being lost, the television radio, re, revenue being lost, the ticket sales, obviously, the, the merch, the, the list goes on. Um, plus, the players have been pissed off for, forever about having to go there. And, and just the whole situation just added and escalated to the point where there was no return. And the fact that while... Morello is very confident, and he was on the board of governors call earlier this week, and he reiterated his confidence to to winning the land auction to get that piece of land to build the new arena, to build the entertainment district, and all that all that fun stuff. Um, but that's at least three more years, right? Like three more seasons after this one. So the league, but Utah, we've talked about this at nauseum for months. Utah was getting a team no matter what; they were yeah. either getting the Coyotes or they were going to get an expansion team. I mean, they kind of got both. Like, this is not a typical relocation. It's not a typical expansion. Um, it's it's technically Team 33. Technically. Yeah, good, the Coyotes, good point. Yeah. Like, yeah, the Coyotes are, are inactive, but they're still alive. So technically, Utah is Team 33, and, and, and Arizona is Team 32, but they're just chilling, having a beer or something. I don't know what they're doing, but... They're, they're, they're doing aqua aerobics next... yes, with all the other right. blue hairs. Yeah. <laughs> stay, stay, <laughs> stay in fit. Yes. Got to stay fit. So, um, look, this is not the ideal situation, obviously, for, for anybody involved. But this is the nature of the beast. And at the end of the day, it's still a business to the NHL. And this was the best business decision for them in both the immediate and, and long term. So, you know, maybe next time Morello addresses the media, he's coached a little bit better. Um, <laughs> because. Yeah, that was bad. It wasn't great. Um, he's not a public speaker. Um, that's, that's pretty evident. And while he doesn't like the media, he doesn't like being on the media and all that stuff. And, and I, I get that. Like, he, he, he was nervous. It was, it was clear cut that, that he was nervous about the situation. And depending who you talk to, like you talk to anybody that's part of the, the Coyotes organization right now, yep. they don't have nice things to say about the guy. Nope. Um, you talk to people and some of the other owners and whatnot, and they're going, okay, well, given the circumstances, given the situation, not everything he did was right. We understand it. He's saying all the right things now. We have no choice but to give him a benefit of the doubt for the next five years. And then you go from there. Um, this is a much better situation now in Utah from an ownership perspective. You've got SEG, the, the uh, Smith uh, Entertainment Group, which I believe includes Dwayne Wade, by the way, if, if we're talking really? athletes and star, star athletes. So he's 
He's part owner of, he bought into SEG and is part owner of the Utah Jazz. I believe he's included in the group that has now taken on this Utah NHL franchise. I'm waiting to confirm that 100%, but I know he's, he's part of SEG. Okay. Um, and, and you have other star powers that are, that are kind of there as well. But you have that. The players are going to go there. They're going to check out the facilities. they got to renovate the rink. It'll do it in two increments, one this summer, one next summer. Um, and, and everything is, is pointing in the right direction. I don't like the fact that they're not going to have or may not have a name. That's ridiculous. For next season. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and I know you want to do it right, you blah, 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 blah. This isn't like we've, again, we've talked about this. He's been part of this for a year, mm-hmm. the Smith, Ryan Smith. So he, was, he, he offered up to be the backup if things went south in Tempe, which they did, and then they tried to prolong it. Um, you've had time to do this. So clearly, you're you're trademarking some a variety. Of, please don't be the blizzard. So like, yeah, that's bad. The blizzard, okay. like you got the avalanche already. You don't need the blizzard. And they're right it's, next door to each other. Yeah, it's like just don't. I mean, Yetis don't are okay. Yeah. Eh, I don't know about the Fury. There's a Venom. Venom. Eh. Okay. Utah HC just don't, sucks. Don't Brutal do that. Yeah don't, yeah. don't don't do, do that. that. Don't do. Thank you. If that's a sidebar, cool. If you're if you're doing others, sure. This isn't MLS. Yeah. Let's let's not get crazy here. So thank you. Thank anyway, you. like yeah. So uh, there's there's some work that needs to be done, but the players will be introduced to the facility and everything next week. Um, and and overall, this is right now anyway good for the National Hockey League. And the fact that you pulled off over twenty thousand um, deposits on season tickets in twenty four hours, that's a hell of a good sign. Yep, Balzi. Yeah, I mean, there's not, there's not much more we can say about that situation. I, I think it's uh, I think it the, the NHL is now in a better spot moving forward. They're not a uh, quote unquote embarrassment. I, well, I think it's Arizona. Yeah. Arizona was an embarrassment. It, yes, and it was becoming a, a problem. And and I think they've they've kind of rectified that. Now the biggest question yep. for me is like. Do they actually want to see Arizona come back in, especially based off of how that press conference went? Can they move to somebody else? That's the big thing right That's there. That's another piece of it. Like so, those, those would be the questions that I would have. So yes and no. Um, Alex Morello has that five-year window now. Um, they kind of had to give it to him. Uh, and, and he still remains confident he's going to pull this off. So, I mean – I guess kudos in terms of the, like, if you're going to do it, just do it right for the love of God, please. Uh-huh. After the, the BS that we've had to deal with the last yes. little while. Yes. Um, so, but that being said, he's allowed to take on partners uh, for both the arena slash entertainment district and the coyotes itself. Mm-hmm. So I, I was just told this yesterday or, 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 or Thursday at some point, um, as part of the call and as part of the details of this, he's allowed to take on partners for either or both of those ventures. Now he has to stay on his majority, I believe. I, I think that's part of the mix. Okay. But he's allowed to take on um, some some partners here. Uh, now, how that affects the overall finances afterwards? Does it increase the billion dollar fee? I don't think so. In terms, because that's already been pre negotiated in terms of them coming back in. Um, but I, I do know that he is allowed to do that. I wouldn't be surprised if that becomes a, an area of exploration for him and the NHL. Um, but whether we continue talking about this or the stability of that franchise, the longevity and the possibility of that happening and all this, and blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. It's almost moot now until we find out if he wins this freaking auction or not. And that's on June 27th. And he still is very confident. He was on the board of governors call this week. He reiterated to everybody he is very confident. And he's remained chairman. Like he's he's still going to be part of all of this. So he's if still he in the National Hockey League, League, essentially. Yes. Yes, he is. He's in the sidecar. Um, yeah. If he clown what clown car? Oh, sidecar. Side, sorry, sidecar. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, you, you could um, say clown car with the way this has yeah. been run. Uh, I have no qualms saying yeah. that because it's a joke. Yeah. It, it, it really has been. Now, okay, yeah. it, this is this is a guy that, and, and I've known before, he doesn't like the public eye and the spotlight and all that okay. crap. Um, he, he's clearly awkward when in front of it and having to deal with it. He didn't want to be there. Um, he didn't go to the last game. Um, 
Hey, like, can he, I he say just... something about that? Yeah. My friend who works for the organization, I asked about, hey, was Gutierrez, was Morello there? He's like, no, they were told that it was a security threat. That's what they were told, Bello. Okay. I don't buy that for one second. I mean, uh, there are some crazies out there. So there I, are, I can give sure. the yep. benefit of the doubt. Okay. Um, okay, interesting. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, I'll, I just want to interject with that. No, no, that's, yeah. no, that's important because that's, that, I hadn't heard that, but that's, um, that's important information because if it is, then it, it adds a little bit of credibility as to why he wasn't there. Um, and then now there's, I mean, with Gutierrez, there's talk he might not even be part of the organization anymore moving forward. So we'll, we'll figure all, I mean, that we'll, we'll figure all out. But right. bottom line here, guys, the next step for the Coyotes, because they still exist, we can still call them that, um, is this auction on June 27th. And he remains confident that he will win that bid. He will win the auction and win the land. So we have to wait now. Um, I guess Utah's going to do its thing and, and management and everybody's moving over there. As far as I've been told, nobody said no. Um, we got to wait until June 27th, the day before the NHL draft, to see if they've won this, this bid. If they do, supposedly it's smooth sailing. They're going to move okay. forward. Well, didn't, if they don't, didn't the, uh, this, the mayor of Phoenix come out and say like he doesn't want that to happen? Scottsdale. Scottsdale. So the, the mayor of Scottsdale came out and basically said, even if he wins this land auction, he doesn't want that arena being built in that area. Yeah. So like, it's to me, there's just so yeah, many on, hurdles. Well, it's, it's on the border of, it's on the border of Phoenix and Scottsdale, okay, uh, right. but all yeah. of the land is, is in Phoenix. So okay. technically, I mean, I don't want them in my backyard either, but I'm, I'm all the way in Toronto, so it doesn't really <laughs> affect me. Now, technically, you could say that, and, and like I understand where he's coming from. Now, there are some politics associated with this um, because uh, apparently he wasn't consulted. Um, oh. There's and It's a neighboring town. It's going to affect some traffic going into their town, depending on where the exits are and, right. and, and things like that. So you could play the politics game there. Um, it was nice timing on on his part because it definitely helped poke um this thing forward uh but as far as i've been told it doesn't really affect their situation so um I, look again if, if they win if they win the auction apparently this is all moving forward and i've talked to a few owners as well um they seem pretty confident in his confidence that he's going to win this this bid, there is not necessarily the same amount of confidence with respect to him being able to build out the entertainment district and arena to which they're proposing. Yeah. Um, but again, like we can debate that all we want. First and foremost, he's got to get that freaking land. So let's figure yeah. that out first. Yeah. Uh, David Pagnotta joining us here on Hello Hockey, 780 218 9999. You can text us or get in on the nasty chat if you're watching on the EST YouTube channel. Tom Gazola, Sean Bell, YouTube Trev with you as well. Uh, catch Pagnotta on NHL Network, NHL Network Radio, and of course on the fourth period. Uh, Bello. Uh, we talked mm -hmm. about the Arizona portion of this, the Salt Lake portion. We, we touched on a bit as well. Uh, text came in and said, how many seats are in the Salt Lake city arena? That's from John. And you talked about the, the, the way they're going to have to adapt the basketball specific arena in downtown. Yeah. So for hockey, there are, um, right now, 16,000 seats that can accommodate hockey. 4,000 of those seats have obstructed view. Right. So 12,000, you're going to watch, you're going to love it, you're going to enjoy yourself. The other 4,000 are going to kind of go, what the hell's can be Yeah, you're moving, move this you're contorting. Yeah. Um, that being said, that is supposed to be rectified, not this summer, next summer. Okay. They will be renovating the building in order to get to, I think it's 17,000. That's not bad. Um, That's for, not bad. for hockey, yeah, 17 or 17.5. I don't know the specific number off the top of my head. It's one of the two, but that would be for not – this summer, next summer is right. when they'll do that. So that right. would be the 25-6 season. Um, right now, they're going to be renovating portions of the building. They're going to be renovating downstairs to accommodate the locker rooms and the facilities and the training centers for both the home and away teams and, and a few other 
items that have to be adjusted to meet NHL criteria. But apparently that's all, that portion will all be done this summer along with some uh, uh, seating related modifications. Mm -hmm. But the full brass to get back to 17 or 17.5 will be done next summer. Um, but you'll still be able to sell, at least from their perspective, those 16,000 seats. Now, I would imagine it's going to be 12,000 at regular price and 4,000 seats at some type of, I don't know, discounted rate sure. to some extent. Sure. Yeah. Um, but they would be able to hold 16,000 people. All right, uh, Dave Pagnotto with us right now. Uh, if you're like me and you're like Balzi and YouTube Trev and you're down in Salt Lake City and you're going, what's a guy got to do to get a beer around here? Uh, I know that they sell at the arena, but uh, the city itself, is it alluring to potential free agents, up-and-coming players? Like, What kind of hockey market is this going to be, Dave? It's going to be interesting. Um, I'm not overly familiar with it. I'll, I'll, I'll lay that out there now. Terrible drivers. Um, I just want to oh, put, okay. put that up. The awful drivers. I do my golf Bad trip drivers. down there. Terrible <laughs> drivers in Utah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Noted. Um, okay. Well, I guess I'll just I'll, – do they have Uber? I guess I'll Uber. They do, yes. Um, okay. So uh, – yeah, look, apparently there, there's some out, like the, these part of the suburbs of, of downtown are apparently very appealing. Mm -hmm. um, there's one particular part of town, I can't remember the name of it. I think Park it's like City? Uh, oh, there's also, yes, there's Park also City. Park City. Yeah. Um, I think there's another area as well, but apparently those are, those are lovely, beautiful. Um, and, and I think, and I mentioned this last week, I think some of the jazz players are going to either, they're, they're providing feedback they're filming something to provide or they're going to meet with them. I don't know exactly how their schedules. Match That's up. cool. Um, but at least to give them, look, we're pro athletes. We're in the NBA. Here's what we do. Here's where we go. And I think that message will be relayed to the NHL players and, and the staff as well um, uh, for that. So beyond that, I, I'm not exactly sure just yet um, exactly what some of the options are going to be, where the, the, yeah, the alcohol apparently is a huge topic. Yeah, it would be for me. Um, so, uh, I want to get, yeah, a lot of people want to get that sense. Right. Yeah. So, um, uh, but uh, yeah, look, uh, all of these, all of these items will be relayed to them. Now, I, I think we're going down to Utah at some point in the summer to check out everything. Nice. Um, to, to see how things are going to go there. But, um, yeah, look, there's, there's a lot of, I think the only hesitation that I have heard from, um, or I, I, maybe a concern to a certain extent during the board of governors calls with some of the owners voice. Um, the, the market size and, and by market size, and I tweeted about this and I think I confused some people. I'm not talking about the size of population. I, I'm talking about the, the, from a business perspective, from a sports perspective, the market size and stability in terms of long-term sponsors, long-term corporate um, affiliations, things, things of that nature. Now it is an up and coming market, certainly with respect to um, uh, uh, digital and tech, tech yeah. which, right, which, which is certainly going to factor in, but, um, there were some concerns there, but nothing that really made everyone go, anybody stand up and say, no, I've got a problem with right. this, with this, with this situation. So uh, minor, minor details, minor concerns. Um, but um, again, all of this is positive. Everything that that's here is, is currently positive from the NHL's perspective. And uh, it's a good way to look at it. Belzi, you want to touch on playoffs with Yeah, I, I want Magnata? to move past that conversation. No, let's, let's talk just... about Utah more. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you're a big skier. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Thanks. Go ahead, Belzi. Just want to get your uh, your take on some of the, the playoff matchups. We've been kind of just chatting about the different uh, matchups over the course of the first round. Who do you got? I know that on the fourth period you, you posted stuff this morning with your yep. picks, but can you share with our listeners who you have? Yeah, look, first and foremost, I think the most hilarious series right now for me is Toronto-Boston because um, Toronto's already finding a way to mind bleep themselves before this thing has even started, uh, which is awesome. Um, they're right. getting into the goalie debate about who's starting for Boston. And we don't care and stop asking us and <laughs> wah, wah, wah. And, and, and William Nylander was hurt and he – woke up and Thursday and he's, he's hurt. So he's questionable for game one tonight. Oh no. He's got the flu. Oh no. We lost Dave. We'll get him back. We'll get him back. Neilander's we'll, got already the flu. Was he scared Boston of the playoffs? Flu? Scared of the playoffs? 
Oh, come on, man, this is not real. I like this. The wow, wow, wow. Who's starting in that? We don't care. I like what Dave said about that. That was actually pretty funny. You know, there he is. He's back. I'll let Let's him get it. Let's go, Dave. Dave, we're laughing about that. Continue. Yeah. Nylander is where it cut out. Go. Yeah, I mean, well, look, they, they, they're already, and sorry, boys, um, but they're, they're already, like, the narrative's already shifting. Like, I, the, the whole city is already in panic mode, and they haven't even dropped the puck yet. So <laughs> it's, 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 it's panic mode, and it's going, oh, typical. So anyway, from a hilarity perspective. I love that. Toronto, Boston, already number one for me. Um, yeah. I have the Bruins in this one, actually. I, I'm just going six. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if the Leafs pull through um, because I think this was a better matchup for them than the Florida Panthers. But it's it's I'm already laughing. It's already funny just just hearing some of this stuff. So I enjoy this. I, I think the most entertaining series is going to be Tampa, Florida. Yes. Um, I, I mean that's a shot for shot type of type of series for me. I got that one going the distance. I like the Florida Panthers in it um, to take it in seven. But this is not going to be a cakewalk. Like this is going to be a battle. And it could go either way. Um, but I think this is going to be one of the most entertaining, probably the most entertaining in the East, the West, Dallas, Vegas for me. Yeah. I, yeah. I think it's going to be going to be right up there. And I have the Stars taking this one also. I think I picked six or seven, but I have got Dallas taking this um, in six, actually. But this is a um, – like I think those two are the most going to be the most entertaining in terms of just pure hockey and back and forth and, you know, shot for shot kind of series. I'm, I'm like in – you know, Florida, Tampa, and Dallas, Vegas. I love it. Uh, Paisan, you want to take a crack at Vancouver and Edmonton series? Yeah, I look, I like the, I, I like this one for the Canucks. Um, you know, a lot of people, and, and I have, I will say this, I have talked to players leading up to on, on LA, Vegas, Nashville, a couple other teams. Mm-hmm. Um, none of them have really voiced their, like nobody's scared to play Vancouver, which is interesting it's, to me. That is interesting. Um, why? 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 Why do you think that is? I think it's just because everything has happened for Vancouver, for the most part, has gone so swimmingly this season, minus Mm -hmm. a little hiccup in between. Um, They haven't really faced significant adversity. And this is also going to be the first time a lot of these guys are going to be playing in a regular playoff series um, uh, since they've entered the National Hockey League. Right. Like, there aren't aren't that many guys with with pure playoff experience. This isn't the bubble. JT Miller. Yep. Exactly, and it's not the bubble. So, that being said... They should beat the, the Nashville Predators. Um, I have them beating the Nashville Predators in six. I think they will. Um, you look at the Preds, as good as Yossi and Saros have been and Forsberg, that top line, you shut down that top line. There's not really much there depth-wise for the Nashville Predators. So I, I like I, – I really like Vancouver in this one. Five or six games. I went with six. I think I was being nice to Nashville, but um, – I, I really I think this is a good matchup for for the Preds. Now, it's, yep. excuse me for the Canucks. It's not going to be easy, but if they find a way to kind of contain that top unit, they should have enough within their depth to get going, providing Thatcher Demko is good and ready to go. Correct, and that's what I'm assuming. Um, Oilers, Oilers, Kings trifecta, third time a charm for LA. Probably not, uh, but um, I, I'm I'm. Also kind of being nice in this one. Uh, I've got Edmonton in six, maybe five. Um, But I will say this. They have a good way the Kings do of containing, especially come playoff time, some of the top guys and frustrating the crap out of the McDavid's and the dry sidles. Yeah, good point. Yep, good point. With Deno, with uh, Kopitar, you've got some good matchups there. And they've got a little added physicality now that you've got, you know, Victor Arvidsson, who's back and is, is fully rejuvenated and, and he's an energy type of player. Akil totally. Thomas wouldn't surprise me to see he, him get some ice time. Carl Grunstrom is supposed to get in there as well. So he's going to add some physicality to the mix. That's the one thing that I look at LA and I go, they might from a defensive and physical perspective, especially going into the playoffs, they might be able to really frustrate the crap out of the Oilers and maybe steal a game or two that they're not supposed to win. Yeah. It wouldn't shock me at all if this goes seven it wouldn't shock me if this is done in five. I'm meeting in the middle and picking the Oilers in six. But I will say this. If the Oilers allow this to go to seven, Ooh. I don't think I would poo-poo all over L.A.'s chances. Trev just gave the, the shaking of the head. He's like, no, no. Bellow, 
Because you, yeah. you can't get there. Exactly. Bello, great stuff as always. Uh, enjoy the Leafs and the Bruins, and maybe we see you for game five here. DB's going to be here, our Kings yep. insider. We get going Monday, 6.30 p.m., game one. That is the oil stream pregame show and postgame show presented by GCL Diesel. Have a great weekend, my friend. Happy playoffs to you, sir. And to you, gentlemen. Enjoy the games. That is our boy, David Pagnata, the Hello oh, Hockey Insider. So good. Love it. And that is uh, going to wrap things up for Hello Hockey. What a show. What a show. That was a good show. Moved I quick. that thoroughly. It did. Uh, congratulations to Jen. Qualified. Yep. For the trip. And uh, that was our last entrant in for the uh, like 140 something entries wow the draw goes on the 26th on the nielsen show that's going to be fantastic be sure to tune in if your name and number is pulled pick up the phone otherwise the boys are moving on to the next one uh that's how they're doing it uh big thank you to jesse granger from the athletic in las vegas covering the golden knights that's going to be an awesome series belzy yep. yes it will uh nexar uh modern measure backscape fox Am I forgetting anyone? Nope. Local. Local. I think Trevor and I are going for lunch, though, right now. Oh, enjoy. Big thank you to everyone who tuned in, texted in. You know we appreciate you and love you. For Sean Bell, YouTube Trev, I'm Tom Gazzola saying thank you as always. Happy playoffs, everybody. Let's go. It's going to be a ton of fun. We'll be back next Saturday as round one will be in full swing. Until then, ciao for now. Enjoy your weekend.